So, uh, Dan Lemon, you were the uh, visual effects supervisor on War for the Planet of the Apes, which uh, is the conclusion to the latest Planet of the Apes trilogy. Uh, first of all, uh, saying goodbye to this trilogy that you've been a part of from the very beginning uh, and saying goodbye to the character of Caesar. What was that like for you and, and for everyone involved? Uh, it, it was pretty amazing, actually. I mean, it's it's one of these uh, franchises that has, um, you know, as, as it's gone from film to film, I don't know that there was, like, uh, when we uh, made Rise, there wasn't, like, a, a set plan, that, like, okay, we're going to go three films and then Caesar's going to die. But, um, you know, it's it's really evolved in a, a natural way. And um, and I think, you know, your writer-director, uh, Matt Reeves, and the writer, Mark Bombeck, have done a, a really masterful job of kind of tying the you know the whole thing together and making it feel like a cohesive arc, and I think that's you know that's really a testament to the you know the strength of those filmmakers. Um, for us, you know, at uh, at Weta, who have created the characters in the movie, um, it's it's been an amazing journey. It's it's something that's really special to be able to take characters that um, you know that you grow from their their infancy and and watch them evolve and change. And I think in particular, the, um, the collaboration we've had with the actors has been something that's been really special, being able to see you know, where Andy Serkis takes the character and how he, um, how he changes Caesar you know, from film to film as he goes through all sorts of different you know, physical and emotional uh, changes. And that's really one of the things that's, that's magic about performance capture is being able to collaborate with actors that um, that bring their own take uh, to, the, to the characters and to, um, to be able to see, you know, what they do with them, and then translate their their performances onto digital characters that, that don't look anything like them, but emotionally um, kind of embody everything that the actor did there on the on the set on the movie. And this movie is pretty uh, is a pretty audacious way to close out the trilogy in that uh, so much of it is focused on the apes. Um, I mean, there's very uh, very few uh, interactions with uh, or emphasis on human characters in here. Can you talk about, uh, I mean, when you guys were planning this film out, uh, was it always the, uh, was it always the intention to focus so much of it on the character of Caesar and these other apes? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really, um, you know, again, that's a, that's a, a writer and director, you know, decision that they made to, to really make the movie completely ape centric. I think, Matt Reeves in particular is a, he's a very point of view driven uh, filmmaker and he um, he's very good at uh, taking the audience along for the ride and getting them to invest in a particular character and then um, you know take them to places and experience emotional and emotionally and also just kind of spatially different you know, different things in the, in the movie and I think that's um, that's been um, that's been one of the, uh, the the great things about about working with him um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Now you have uh, been uh, kind of uh, with the, uh, with, excuse me, you have uh, been at the forefront of performance capture uh, kind of since the beginning. I mean, you worked on the first Lord of the Rings movies, uh, which of course had Andy Serkis as Gollum, uh, and you've watched it evolve into this. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, I guess the benefits of performance capture when it comes to a movie like this and the way it's evolved. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I think there's, there, there's, um, there's something that's really great about having actor driven characters, you know, whether it's through performance capture or roto capture or other, you know, other methods, um, having an, an actor that can be on the set and collaborate with the director and with the other actors in the movie, to create a character that's kind of that has a cohesiveness and a um, you know a, a consistency you know through the film and, and an arc to their character, to have one person as sort of the uh, the the kind of central author of that that performance. It's you you get a totally different kind of um, uh, you know performance from that that process, and it's something that that we discovered pretty early on 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 Rings. You know, Andy Circus originally was just hired to do the voice of Gollum. And it was something that I think um, you know Peter Jackson uh, and, and Andy, you know, through through working on that movie, decided, well, you know, if he's doing the voice anyway. Let's let's put him into the the shot and it'll give the actor something to, to play off of. And it really quickly became apparent that it wasn't just he wasn't just um, functioning as a stand-in, but he was actually participating as an actor in the scene. 
and uh, creating much stronger performances or, or helping create a lot much stronger performances for the other characters who can react to him and play off of him. And, you know, Andy's just such a, a gifted actor um, as well, and he brings so many ideas uh, to, the, to the process and um, that makes, you know, what are really amazing and surprising decisions from scene to scene. And that's one of the things that's so great about watching him, him work. So it's been a real privilege to be able to, you know, watch him through many different movies, many different characters, um, you know, watch his craft and his process in, in creating these um, these different kind of characters and that's that's the you know the big strength of performance captures being able to take actors and and leverage all of their talent and their their skill set um, and also the process of filmmaking to be able to keep it um, collaborative keep the the actor in the same room with the other actors and with the director and allow them to experiment and try things out and then um, and then take that actor everything that they've done in the scene all the nuances of their performance and put it onto a character that looks nothing like them. It's, you get the best of both worlds. You get all of the, you know, the immediacy and the collaboration of the acting process, but without any of the restrictions of their their human form, we can change that into, you know, just about anything. And uh, it's a it's a really cool and uh, exciting thing to be able to do. Well, take us on to the set. I mean, give us some insight into how you work with uh, the director, the cinematographer, everybody on the set in order to pull off these amazing visual effects and make it look as if uh, these apes are really interacting, uh, existing within the real world and interacting with uh, the other actors within the scene. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, um, it's something where like a lot of what we do is, uh, has to do with trying to get out of the way. Um, we try to set everything up so that we get as much data, as much information about what that actor is doing on that set as possible but we want to minimize how intrusive we are. Um, so, you know, we will sacrifice, in, in, you know, the quality of the data if it means allowing the actors to um, to be able to do things that they, they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So you'll see a lot of the actors wearing these um, these booms with cameras on the, the ends of the stick, you know, on their attached to their helmets. And sometimes we'll take those off because the actors need to, need to you know, um, make contact with one another or hug or fight or, you know, whatever. Um, and so we'll, we'll give up that data in order to let them have a, a more natural, uh, less encumbered performance. Um, you know, there's a lot of things just about the visual effects process in general that are um, that slow down filmmaking a little bit. You know, we need things like lighting reference. We'll walk around with those funny balls, the kind of shiny chrome ball and the gray ball. Um, in this movie, we made uh, little um, sort of stuffed heads of Caesar and Maurice that we carried around as well. Um, just to have a physical lighting reference there on the on the set. Uh, so we'll get those lighting reference passes and we'll also get clean passes where we take as many of the um, the actors playing the apes out of the frame as possible in order to get information about what's behind them so that we can then use that to paint out the actors later. You know, because the, the apes are different sizes than the actors, inevitably when you put the ape over the top of the actor, parts of the actor stick out from the ape's body. So we have to remove that. So there's, there are a few things that, um, that you know, just in the process of making a visual effects movie, we do that, that uh, slow things down a little bit. But a lot of my job is to try to make that as, as minimal as possible so that the filmmaking process can proceed in an unencumbered kind of way. Mm -hmm. And then in the post-production process, can you take us through some of the uh, challenges of um, what you have to do in order to make realistic looking hair, for instance, um, yeah. and make it look like it's actually moving and, and interacting with the environment? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's, there's all these little technical um, things that, you know, like the, the hair moving is, you know, one of them. We've got hair that gets blown by wind. We've got hair that gets hit by raindrops and that rolls through snow, and we have to pick up the snow, and then the snow has to melt. There's a lot of these, you know, technical details that have to be worked out. But, um, you know, the the general process, the way that the the sort of post production process works is, um, Matt goes into the editing room with his editor, in this case uh, Bill Boyd and um, and Stan. He he takes the um, basically he he cuts together a version of the movie that doesn't have any apes in it. It just has the actors Andy Serkis, Terry Notary, Karen Connable. Steve's on. They're wearing their their funny gray suits with all the little dots on them. And this version of the movie has them, you know, looking like humans wearing funny gray suits. 
But you're able to, through your kind of suspension of disbelief, you start watching the movie in that form, and you just accept that, okay, Andy's Caesar and Steve Zahn's Bad Ape. And even though you know their visual appearance, I know that they're, they're humans, emotionally, they're behaving like apes, and everything that they're doing on the screen is emotionally authentic. And so you just accept, okay, they're gonna, they, these, are, these are apes. Um, and, and so Matt and the editors are able to cut together the movie and make decisions about where to cut and what performances to select based on that human version of the, of the apes. And then they hand it over to us once it's cut together. And our job is just to um, replace the humans with apes. And so that's, um, that's where we get involved and we start making, um, we go through a process where we block out animation first, where there's no facial expressions, it's just body movement. Um, and then we do a refinement pass, we add the facial ex expressions, the, uh, the lip sync, um, we add the animation of the fingers and toes, which don't get captured uh, through the performance capture system. A lot of kind of hand uh, massaging and keyframing, but always referring back to the actor's template as the, our, our ground truth reference for what emotionally um, our characters need to do. Because, you know, the scene already works with the, what the actors have done. So our job is simply to make our digital characters hit all of those, those same beats. And then um, once we get through the animation process, we go through a rigging process where we, uh, we build a, like a, an ape skeleton that get, moves around um, uh, using that motion. We hang muscles on it, we simulate those muscles, they jiggle and they, they flex and they relax. We run a skin simulation over the top of that. Um, we run a, a hair groom on top of that, we simulate the hair as well. Um, we've got uh, all sorts of um, detailed textures that we apply to the, the you know, the, the skin and, and also the fur as well, and run it through a, um, a lighting simulation engine that we call Manuka, which is our, our rendering engine, and that creates images that look like photographs, and then we composite those into the original photography, and uh, we add extra elements, ground interaction, rocks getting kicked around, sometimes explosions or, or you know, gunfire hits. And um, and that's basically what you see in the movie. And the film really, I mean, I mean there's this uh, kind of really impressive reality to the images that you're looking at, uh, which really helps uh, with this film's much darker tone. Um, I think that if the apes did not look real, you would not feel as much sympathy for the apes in this movie. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I mean, realism is always, uh, you know, of paramount importance. And it's, it's realism in terms of their, their visual uh, qualities, but it's also realism in terms of their, uh, their performance. And this is something that goes back to what Matt does, Matt Reeves, the director, what he does on set when he's working with his actors as well. You know, he'll, um, he'll sit at the monitor and he'll watch very closely, he'll be listening to, to what they're saying. And, you know, he'll sometimes do 15, 20 takes where each time he's watching it, he's, you know, he's asking himself the question, like, do, do I believe this? Does this feel real? And he'll adjust, you know, work with the actors to adjust their performances so that um, so that it feels totally credible and totally real, you know, watching it in front of them. Now, of course, they don't look like apes yet, but emotionally, um, that realism is already there. And that's so important for us to have that uh, emotional realism as a foundation to build our characters on. Um, we do the same thing, you know, as we create our characters. We're looking at, uh, just, you know, for starters, the animation, making sure that we're um, staying true to what the actor did, that we're, that our facial expressions are legible in the same way that the actor's facial expressions were legible, that we're hitting kind of beat for beat exactly what they were doing. And then we also, um, you know, we go through the same process uh, as we create the kind of the, the visual look of the characters, as we, you know, build out their skin and add wrinkles and scars and scrapes. You know, Caesar has about 30 different looks that he goes through the through the movie as he gets knocked around and beat up and heals a little bit and gets left out in the cold and the rain. Um, and so in the same way that the makeup department on set has a sort of continuity Bible that they follow as, as they go from scene to scene for their characters, we do the same thing for our characters. We make sure that they're, you know, visually they evolve over the course of the movie and that it's all consistent. And um, yeah, that, that realism is, is something that's sort of, sort of paramount. And, um, one of the things that's changed, you know, from the last movie that we made, from Dawn, is we we fully uh, integrated our um, our physics light simulation software called Manuka, which is a, a ray tracing renderer, 
And that uh, ray tracing render much more accurately models the transport of light through a scene. So we're able to take our measurements of what the cinematographer did on the set and in a way that's a, you know, more accurate than ever before, recreate that inside the computer so that the cinematographer's lighting is, uh, you know, is, is coming to bear directly on our digital characters. You keep talking about uh, honoring the performances of the actors in the film, and I think that brings up an interesting uh, point, which is that uh, you know whether or not performance capture is real acting. And um, I mean, from what it sounds like, you could not do this if you didn't have that material there from the set, if you didn't have those performances from the actors. That's right. It's I mean, it's a totally different kind of process. And in fact, that's that's kind of what we did on the Jungle Book. You know, when we created the character King Louie another um, ape, uh, this one that just happens to be 11 feet tall, and he was uh, played by Christopher Walken, but it was, you know, Christopher Walken did the, the voice for him, but he never was on set with uh, uh, Neil Seth that you played Mowgli. So um, we had a lot of great reference of, of Christopher from his other films over the years. We had great reference of him reading his lines in the sound booth, but you know he was, you know, he's mostly looking at his lines, and he's he was, you know, gesturing, and doing things like that. But it was, um, it wasn't a complete performance, and so the, that process was more like a, you know, like a traditional Disney film or Pixar film, where we we have a voice track and we've got some some reference, and we sort of assemble through the process of animation. We we discover and refine a performance, and we might have thirty different animators working on the same character from shot to shot making different decisions slightly, looking at different pieces of reference. And it's, you know, it's one way to, to build a character, but it's, it's not, um, it's the more traditional animated way rather than the traditional filmmaking way or the theatrical way where you get actors into a room with the director and you, you work out a scene. And that, that is the process that, you know, that we've gone through on these Apes movies. And it's, it creates a different kind of, kind of movie, a different kind of performance. And it's a lot more, um, I think anyway, in, in many cases, uh, it's, it, you know, to the extent that the, um, the actor and the directors are able to, to um, find a scene that is uh, emotionally incredible, the animation is able to stick to that, um, you know, very closely um, through, you know, through the performance capture process. And so um, you get, you know, you just get a different kind of movie. Speaking of The Jungle Book, you won your first Academy Award for that film uh, earlier this year. Uh, what did that kind of recognition mean for you? Uh, I mean, look, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, um, it's one of these things where, you know, I was, I was one guy of four standing on a stage. We were representing the efforts of, you know, literally over 2,000 people. Um, you know, back at Weta, we had at least 400 people working on the movie. Um, so. On the one hand, you know, it's it's a, it's a tremendous honor, and it's it was a fantastic experience. Uh, on the other hand, it's it, it's a little funny taking credit for you know what is really the effort of thousands of people, and um, you know it, it's a great honor, and it's a great um, you know it's it's humbling to, to to be there representing all those people, um, and uh, you know fantastic to see all their effort uh, you know um, pay off and be recognized by an award like that. Well, Dan Lemon, thank you so much, and congratulations on your work. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good